Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the survival horror game series. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on with the game and we're going to be setting up a simple stamina and sprint system. So what that is, it's essentially going to allow us to sprint in the game, um, but at the same time it's also going to use stamina and we're also going to be showing you how to regenerate, uh, regenerate stamina. Also, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to actually set up stamina on the UI. So we have a button in the top left, not a button, but a progress bar in the top left hand corner for it. Uh, so we're going to show you how to make that move along with our stamina. Anyway, so uh, if you haven't actually watched this series already, especially the last video, I advise that you go ahead and check it out uh, just so you can get up to date with where we are. Also, if you haven't seen the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series, I also advise you check that out so you can easily follow along and understand. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into creating our stamina system. So before I go into actually creating it, I just want to go over some of the basic logic that we've got. So what I've done here is I've already created the system inside of Blueprint in a test project of mine. And what we're doing is essentially just uh, playing around with a few variables, adjusting the max walk speed, um, and then we've got our stamina variable, we add to it and we take away from it, we've got a little bit of conditioning and stuff. It can look quite uh, sim uh, quite complex and daunting, uh, don't be afraid uh, to just dive in with it, just see what you can do, just try and follow along. I'm going to try and explain it as best as I can, and hopefully by the end of this tutorial you'll actually have a better knowledge of how you can use conditioning, working with variables and stuff to create mechanics such as this uh, stamina and sprint system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up a input for the stamina. So uh, not the stamina but for the sprint. So what I want to do is when the player presses shift it's going to pretty much start sprinting and when he releases it it's going to stop sprinting. So instead of just using the shift key uh, in the blueprint, I'm going to set up a proper, uh, you know, uh, input for it. So to do that, I'm going to go into my project settings and I'm going to go to input and then under action mappings, I'm going to go ahead and create one for sprint. And the reason why I'm doing it from here is because it's going to allow us to uh, not only put on the buttons for the keyboard, it's also going to let me set it up for the Xbox One, PS4 and so on. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use the left shift. If you want to add other controllers, just go ahead and press the little pr uh, plus button here under sprint and then just add whatever you want. So uh, Xbox One, PS4 and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much that uh, there. Now we can actually reference this uh, sprint action mapping event inside of Blueprints. So all of our stuff for uh, this system is going to be contained inside of our first person character. The reason for this is because it's going to be our third person character that we're trying to change. Uh, so for example, we're going to be changing the walk speed of the character and we're also going to contain all of the variables within. So there is a few variables that I'm going to set up before we actually start working on the blueprints behind it. So go ahead and open up your third person character. And when it is open, mine's taken a while to load for whatever reason, uh, we need to create a couple of variables. So I'm just going to quickly pause the video and get back to you as soon as it's finished loading. Okay, so now that it's all up, we can actually start working on things. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a couple of variables. So the first variable that I'm going to create is actually going to be for our stamina. And this is pretty much just going to tell the game exactly how much stamina the player has going from 0 to 100. And we're also going to be referencing this later on in the UI. So just go ahead and press the little plus button down here to create a new variable. I'm going to call it player stamina. And in the details panel, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to an integer so that it's a numerical value, that, uh, a numeric value that we can play around with. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm also going to create another variable and this one's going to be a bool and it's just going to be called is uh, sprint on or is sprinting, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much our way of setting up conditioning and seeing whether or not the player is actually sprinting. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to a boolean and I'm going to go and compile this um, 
so that it's all going to work for us. So one thing I do want to mention um, with your player stamina uh, value, if you want to change the default value so he doesn't start with zero stamina, you can do it just by changing the default value in here. So the next step is actually setting up uh, you know, the actual events and the actual functionality for pressing the button. So we need to tell the engine what to do when the player presses the button and when the player releases the button. So what I've got to do is set up an action event and this action event is going to be for sprinting. So I'm just going to right click, press sprint and then from this you can see we've got pressed and released. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and run a check from this and what we're going to do is essentially just see whether or not if the sprint is on, uh, sorry it's not going to, it's going to see whether or not the player actually has enough stamina to start sprinting. So to do that I'm going to add the branch under condition I'm just going to see whether or not the integer is greater than uh, a value or greater than or equal to. So what this is going to do is check whether or not the player actually has more than one stamina. If it doesn't, we're going to do nothing. And if it is, we're going to go ahead and change the speed of the player, set the sprint on and all of that cool stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this up just like that. And hopefully now it's only going to sprint if we have more than zero stamina. Uh, more, uh, sorry, less, uh, more than one stamina even. Okay, so the next step that we need to do is essentially set the is sprint on. Set is sprint on, and we're going to make sure that is hooked up to true. And after that, we're also going to adjust the walk speed so that it actually changes the speed of the player. Now, if you want to do that, what you've got to do is get a reference to character movement, just drag it in here, and then move this out and just type in set max walk speed. Now, by default, the player walk speed is going to be 600 when you're working with the third person uh, template. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up and I'm going to double it. So, I'm going to change that to 1200. And now that we've done that, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing for released. I'm just going to set is sprint on. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to set the walk speed back down to uh, back down to 600, the default value. So I'm going to go ahead and type this, uh, set this to 600. I've just copied and pasted these values and now let's go ahead and see if this works. So when we're walking in here we got the normal speed. If I press shift you can see it does, it does get slightly faster. I'm going to go ahead and run a quick print string so we can actually see whether or not this is working properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in print string and I'm going to do the same thing for the other side so what I'm going to do is type in released here and sprinting and sprinting there you are um, and by the looks of things it's not going to work at the moment simply because we don't actually have more than one stamina so I'm going to quickly change the player value for this down to uh, the player stamina to 15 for now just so we can actually use our system so if I press shift now it should actually start sprinting so you can see it's now doubled in speed when we run along and that's pretty much the basics of our stamina system now we do need to do a few more things such as regenerating the stamina and actually taking it away when it's sprinting so let's go ahead and do that now that we've actually got the functionality down so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the event tick node to pretty much, um, you know, add a delay to it and then take away stamina uh, whenever he is sprinting. And the way we're going to know whether or not he is sprinting is from this is sprint on node that, uh, variable that we created earlier on. It's going to come in real handy and hopefully it gives you a good idea of how we can use stuff like this for conditioning and you know adding all kinds of cool mechanics. So what I'm going to do is first things first I'm going to go over to my event tick I'm going to drag it out a little bit all the way over here and because we want to do more than one sequence of events uh, with our tick because you know we've got our hunger system I'm going to add in the sequence node and then I can just fire off some other stuff. So we've got all of our hunger system stuff here 
and in the then one we're just going to do all of our sprinting stuff so what we're going to do here is pretty much just run another check so branch and we're just going to check whether or not sprinting is on and if sprinting is on we're going to take away stamina and if sprinting is off we're going to add stamina so it regenerates so let's go ahead and do this so i'm going to drag in is sprint on and i'm going to hook up the condition here and under true and false, I'm going to add in a couple of delays because every fr uh, with the tick stuff, what it's going to do is run every frame. Uh, we don't want it to be that often, so we're just going to have some uh, delays here of 0.2 seconds. It works relatively well for me, so I'm going to go ahead and work with that. So I'm going to compile it one more time, and from the top here, I'm just going to see whether or not the uh, the player stamina is actually, uh, you know, greater than or equal to. So what I'm going to do is drag it in. Going to get integer greater than or equal to. Now the reason why we're doing this is because, oops, sorry. Okay, yeah. So the reason why we're doing this is because we just want to check whether or not it's greater than or equal to so that we can actually change this player speed back down to 600 so uh, so if it goes below zero not greater than sorry less than so if it goes below zero what I'm gonna do if sprinting is on and it gets to zero we're just gonna turn off sprinting it's as simple as that so let's go ahead and do this so once again it's a stamina value that we need to check and we're gonna hook up zero here and the next step is adding the true value to setting it back down to 600. So set uh, is sprint on to untrue, and then we're just going to set the max walk speed. And here we go, set max walk speed. There we are, and we're going to set it to 600. Simple uh, as that. Okay, so let's quickly have a look what we've got here. So every couple of seconds, or every 0.2 seconds, we're gonna check where, uh, if the sprinting is on, we're gonna check whether or not the player stamina is less than or equal to B, B being zero, and if it is less than or equal to it, it's gonna turn sprinting off. Uh, now, if it isn't, what we need to do is actually just start taking away from the integer for player stamina. And this is just going to stop you having indefinite sprinting. So to do that, it's actually quite simple. What I'm going to do is set player stamina. And I'm just going to go ahead and do integer minus integer. And what we're doing here is we're just going to take away one from the integer for player stamina. So I'm going to get the reference to player stamina. And we're just going to take away one. And once that's done, all I'm going to do is quickly print a string. And I'm just doing this so we can actually see, you know, how much player stamina we've got. Once we actually start chucking this stuff on the user interface, we'll get rid of all the print strings and it will look really nice. So that is pretty much everything for uh, true or false uh, for this bit here. Uh, well, sorry, for the true side of sprinting is on. It, now all we need to do is set up the regeneration side of things. So what we've got to do is pretty much add to the player stamina value whenever they're not sprinting. So this is going to be the false here. We've got a 0.2 delay. And all we're going to do is just do integer might plus integer on uh, the player stamina. So set player stamina. And what we're going to do is just integer plus integer just like that and we're just going to get a reference to player stamina so what it's going to do is just going to add one to itself and lastly we're going to print string just so we can actually see how much stamina we've got so i'm going to go ahead and press compile press play and let's give this a test so you can see it's starting off from 15 and the stamina value is now going up in the top left hand corner and when I press shift, you can see it says it's sprinting and the value starts going down. Once I release it, 
it starts going up again and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much everything for our stamina and sprinting system set up. So I'm going to end off the tutorial here, thanks for watching. I also advise that you check out the next tutorial where we actually show you how to set up the stamina bar in the top left hand corner. And what we're going to be doing is essentially setting up a content binding, sorry, a progress binding for the bar so it moves along with the value. It's quite simple to do, uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.